Hello, everybody. My name is Jake Burkowski. I'm Principal Architect here at Snowflake. Today, I'm going to show you a bit how you can search your logs natively in Snowflake. A lot of times when we're bringing in customers for cybersecurity use cases, they're coming from a legacy sim. They're used to a certain way of thinking, and they're a little bit afraid to start in the world of SQL. One of the things I always like to walk through with them is how the world of SQL is less scary than they'd think, and how Snowflake provides a whole lot of tools that can help make this journey easier and get them to value faster without needing to learn complicated commands, complicated joins, and all of those things. I'm going to start with SQL, but today I'm going to showcase several methods, including visual and AI methods that are going to allow customers to access their data way faster, allow them to conduct their investigation, triage alerts, and explore Threat Hunt through their data. So let's get started. Right now we see SnowSight, the main way to interface and query your data. Let's take a look here. We're going to start by writing a very simple command. This is your learn SQL in 15 minutes. Let's select star from vulnerabilities. All right. See, we already have that auto tab that's going to help you out a bit. We're going to run that command. The UI is going to spin up. And the first thing we're going to see is the result set of everything that we're looking for. Now, at this point, we're done writing SQL for now. We're going to explore things visually. Snow site has the capability to do visual filters, things like checking for things that are open or closed, has the ability to do searches, has the ability to potentially do free text searches as well. So we're instead of writing more SQL, we're going to jump right in here to this search bar. Let's just say we're looking for something about log4j. You can search for log4, hit go, automatically see here all the results as all of our vulnerabilities potentially open. Again, we're trying to meet our customers where they're at, give them that familiar and intuitive interface have the ability to also filter again, things like by time, right? Either again, through the GUI, or through other ways such as our uh, built-in parameters. A lot of customers want to use reusable codes similar to interactive playbooks. So here, of course, while we can always add where clauses and things to narrow things down, let's take a look at how we could do that using a parameter. Let's say where created at equals, now here we could either type in the date or we can use a parameter, make things a little bit more repeatable right? We're going to use the built-in date range function here, and that's automatically going to give us a visual date picker. Now, this worksheet can be shared. People don't have to necessarily copy and paste, copy and paste, and tweak a bunch of values. They can run this once for many investigations. Run that here, and we'll see that we have a very similar result set. Another thing I'd like to point out is our ability to create visualizations directly in Snowflake. You can see here's this chart button. I see this created a visualization already for us. Again, helping with more intuitive searches. Snowflake Copilot allows analysts to query their data using natural language as well as generate SQL commands. Here we can ask. And see how Copilot will analyze the prompt restate it to the user, and then tell about the data. Here we're describing the different data that's in this database. We can have it generate SQL as well. Here we're going to ask it for criticality, knowing full well that the field name is severity. Copilot understands this, again, restates the problem, generates the appropriate SQL command. It explains to the end user and the analyst what it does, validates the query, and this can be run directly. We'll run this result, and we'll see our top vulnerabilities as well. Customers also like to take advantage of functions, either built in or custom. Snowflakes provides many such functions, but I'm going to pick out a few that I think are most relevant. Uh, parse IP, for instance, which gives uh, detailed information about an IP address. Uh, search, which allows for tokenized searches and searching multiple columns at once. And of course, search IP, for instance, which allows performantly picking an IP out of a larger string. These search functions ship with their own brand of search optimization. Uh, which is what Snowflake uses to achieve high levels of performance for those needle in the haystack style searches that are very common for cybersecurity customers. Many of our customers also choose to implement uh, custom user-defined functions, which can be more geared toward uh, an exact customer-specific use case. 
So here's an implementation of a universal style search, really just a few lines of code um, that can be used to kind of, again, right, emulate that universal style search that many legacy sims will provide. Um, so it's an implementation, right? Searching a large variety of cyber logs simultaneously. This is something customers may be using in a uh, situation such as during log4j or, well, you know, the solar winds incident. And here we can kind of see that this just searches all logs at once. Additionally, a very popular function that we have, possibly our most popular at the moment, um, is Cortex Complete. Um, that allows you essentially call an LLM mid-query, or as I like to say, join on the results of an LLM. And that's obviously useful in a variety of use cases, a little bit outside the scope of what we're talking about today. Um, but in this case, right, we're going to be using this to analyze data that's maybe not universally structured. Uh, and we're going to call an LLM to help interpret this for us, right? That's going to save a lot of effort and time. Uh, especially, let's just say, for an incident responder who at 2 in the morning may lack the contextual or domain-specific expertise. Here we show that we're taking a look at, say, a shell log, right? This may be a little bit different depending on Linux, BSD, Windows, right? Different versions of things. But we don't necessarily care because we're just going to pass an example of that to an LLM. And we're just going to have it interpreted for us. What is this request trying to do? We're going to take a look at the shell log commands that a user, right, the incident, what is this incident, right? This is given to us, the shell log, which we're giving it. Um, and we're just going to have it interpret that for us. So for instance here, right, we get an alert that looks something like this. The LLM is going to tell us this is likely a disk space alert where threshold beyond 90 on this here um, fake URL. We look at the shell log, it will interpret that for us, right? Take something that looks like this and say, yes, this user is uh, essentially listing listing the contents of directory and just removing a core dump to kind of free up a little bit of space here. Um, and then we're able to justify, yes, this is a match, right? The incident and the commands match each other. This, this uh, incident responder wasn't doing anything outside of the approved change management window. And we'll even say, okay, and here's why and how this is in our justification for why we think that was a match. Now we'll talk about some of the ways that customers are querying Snowflake visually. First thing I'll showcase is Cortex Analyst. This is very similar to our Copilot functionality, however, it operates on a semantic layer. Semantic layer understands your data a little bit more by taking advantage of things like synonyms, descriptions, and the relationships between the various fields, columns, and tables. Obviously, we can populate all this with AI as well. Here, we're taking a look at things such as access logs, cloud service provider logs, and inventory. We could see a native visual field to take a look at this, as well as looking for things like synonyms, things like titles, and of course, all of these things can be populated by AI as well, and a human will just need to review it for oversight. The semantic layer allows us to be much more powerful in the queries that we're able to run. Um, so for instance, here, we're going to ask that same question, what are our most critical vulnerabilities that are open? This is going to do a few different things here. It's going to interpret the question. This is how we ensure accuracy. It's by restating that question to the user. Again, if this uh, our service doesn't know the answer, it's just going to simply respond with, I don't know. Additional way that we validate is by returning the query itself, both in terms of the physical query that was executed and optimized, as well as the semantic query, which a user can review just to make sure it's doing what they want to do. In areas where, you, where an end user may want to then further explore, this is like to say to get them to the 10 yard line, it's going to automatically figure out which columns are needed, right? No more thinking was that IP underscore address, IP ADDR, right? It's going to know all these things for the end user. They can take this if they so choose back to the back to the worksheet, or again, just take a look at either the visualization, or in this case, right, this doesn't need to be visualized as a graph, take a look at this, the data actually returned in the chatbot app. This app can then be shared via end users, um, or we can integrate this service via REST, either into an internal or external application, or even in Streamlit. Streamlit is our low code data uh, app building platform. We see a lot of teams, including Snowflake, using it to create applications with minimal effort. Here's that change management uh, reviewer from later, from earlier. Um, we could see here that a simple user interface can actually be taken to review the results rather than having an end user or reviewer who may not be very SQL savvy run those commands. We can expose it to them directly here in this app. Um, so we can also see here where I mentioned low code, right? This entire application is running just under 100 lines of code. Um, again, this is Python style. I like to say pseudocode since you're not actually building a full application, but rather just configuring things. Similarly, 
uh, we'll see a lot of our customers, including our security team, will be building interactive playbooks in Snowflake. Here we demonstrate how uh, interactive playbook can be used to, for an investigation, things such as helping users format queries by integrating time pickers, dates pickers, as well as some pre-made, such as here we have for log for, log for shell. Integrating everything together, right? We can use some of our tools here, integrating both say Cortex Analyst and Cortex Search. Cortex Search is our completely managed RAG feature. Pass, um, pass documents to it and it will automatically create the RAG without an end user needing to do anything to essentially build or architect around this. We combine this with Cortex Analyst and now we can answer questions about documents and provide those, um, right, provide those supporting documents. Here again, a little bit of a joke here, my dear, we wrote, a, wrote an application to query MITRE. Here we can ask it what is phishing. The LLM here, right, using Cortex Complete is going to tell us all the different types of phishing, common methods, models, as well as give us the supporting documents. In this case, these documents are um, the actual uh, MITRE definitions and then links to the techniques. Again, not hard to say that you could use this to train on and query your own information. Right internally, we're using we build chatbots as well to look at our own internal policies, um, to expose those to our employees. Just give them better access and understand questions about what is and what isn't allowed, um, as well as you could use this to combine with threat intelligence information as well. And of course, similar to the above or to the previous demos, right? You can see here, right, that this entire thing was still very small amount of code. Like again, only about roughly a hundred lines of SUA code. So this concludes our demo. Hopefully you've all learned a lot. Thank you all very much for listening.